Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to season five, episode 14, I think this is. This is the final episode. End of the line. Ooh, season's over. But anyways, I had a great season, had a lot of fun. Uh, in the last week here, I did manage to catch a couple critters, so we're gonna go out on the line, check a few traps, and then we'll come back here and I'm gonna show you some stuff with some fur I got behind me here, and then I'm just gonna wrap everything up with some of my final thoughts, so. Let's go out in the line, check a few sets, and see a couple critters. Well, here's my big catch for the uh, start of the last week of trapping season. It is February the 16th or 17th. And this is the same uh, set that I had the raccoon sitting over the top of my traps. Having a meal, never caught him here. But I caught a possum here. <laughs> my camera's right over there. So, probably got this on film, but probably not that exciting of a catch. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get this guy out of these traps. Well, here's my second catch for the final week of the season. Another possum at the same spot. They're tearing that place up. Oh well, I'm gonna get this guy taken care of. And that's about a wrap for today. I think I got like one more cable restraint to check. Maybe Lady Luck will smile on me. Well, good morning, folks. It is February, probably around 20th or so. 21st, maybe. Uh, this little area here has produced uh, decent amount of fur for me this year I caught I think one coyote right here and a raccoon over there I caught two reds and a raccoon and I think a possum and then right up here I caught a red fox and now got another coyote today definitely has better fur than uh, the last one I caught in the cable restraint we'll get this guy dispatched and see how it uh, how the fur actually looks overall Basically, I had a, a Dunlap called these projection sets. These couple pieces of wood were just sort of sticking straight out here. Had some gland lore and some urine on them. And the red fox I caught here was quite a while ago. So, And I didn't re-lure these for quite some time. I mean, we only got a couple days of the season left. And my sets have just been sitting there. It's been just like a, just going along and checking stuff. Hoping for the best. And today, this is pretty good. All right, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna get this guy taken care of and check a few more sets. Good morning, everybody. It was a pretty chilly morning. I think it was about 12 or 12 degrees or so. Pretty crisp. Earlier in the year, I caught a gray fox right down this cable, uh, in a cable restraint right down this trail. I reset another one there, but I also reset, not reset, but I set, uh, another cable behind here on like a little secondary trail there was just a light trail coming through here so I stuck another cable here and I got myself another pretty little gray fox <laughs> in a cable restraint nice little gray fox friend of mine he wants one tanned for his grandson so i'm going to take this gray fox i'm going to do my best to try to skid it out uh feet and all paws claws and everything so that's my plan with this gray fox so got a nice neck catch on it perfect neck catch you can still see the trail down that way a little bit not setting any more cable this the season is over in two days so not a bad last week so far. I got a couple possums, coyote, and a gray fox now. So I'm going to get this guy taken care of and head to the skinning shed. Okay, so I got three furs uh, leaning up here. Uh, they're not all mine. These two are mine. And this is one that a guy shot. It looks giant because of the way it's skinned out. This A guy shot this during the uh, Mosquito Creek Coyote Hunt. If you're for anywhere from around Central PA, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, tons of hunters get into it, and there's big money involved in it. So 
Uh, let's check out these two first. This is a gray I caught. And uh, a guy I know, he wants his, he wanted one skinned out for a gift. And I did my best skinning the ears out. Usually when I skin them for just sending them to market, I just ripped the cartilage out. And it usually rips half the ear off. So I, I did my best trying to keep all the ears intact and everything. And then I watched my brother do this with his bobcat. So I skinned it out, claws and all. And everything got the little dew claws on there and then the back feet here so first time i ever did that with the gray fox it wasn't too bad and here's the uh the last coyote i caught wasn't very nice i mean dark colored it's got some decent fur right through here but it was starting to rub right here once i got it back to my house and checking it out a little closer i saw it had a pretty good rub mark right here so this thing might be borderline worthless. I don't know. <laughs> this is going to be one of those $2 coyotes probably. But once I got it home and started messing with it, I just finished skinning it off. The underside of it doesn't look too bad, but it was definitely starting to rub. All right, here's the coyote that I caught. Or not I caught. That a uh, guy shot during the coyote hunt. I think this one weighed about 36 pounds. and But that's not getting the... The big money he'll get a few dollars again I, he's gonna uh, get this tan for a wall hanger so I try to do the best I could on the ears the fur on the back side here might be slightly weak here I mean it's not it's better than mine here so but down from here down it's nice and thick it's really thick it's pretty dark looking coyote nice and thick down through here should tan up pretty nicely and I did the <laughs> did the feet and the claws on this one him, but man was that a bugger i'm telling you what i can do a gray i can skin a whole gray fox in the time it took me to do one of these feet and you guys that do wolves from my understanding wolves you pretty much do all wolves you skin all the feet and the claws out because they're mostly done for uh to get them tanned just for wall hangers and stuff i picture a wolf to be a nightmare to skin so i mean it, that's a little bit challenging, skinning all them, every little individual toe out and everything. But maybe I'll get better at it as time goes by. First time I ever did it on a coyote. It's drying up nicely. Uh, he shot it with a 243. The entrance hole, it was just like a 22 caliber hole. It was, it was minor, but uh, the exit hole was about the size of a silver dollar. So I sewed it up uh, best I could. I hope it makes it through the tanning process for him. So... That's something I learned there. And let's see, some final thoughts on the season. Okay, some final thoughts on the season. First, I had a great season. In the beginning, I didn't know if I was going to get the trap at all. But my, my wife's health improved, and I was able to trap through the entire season. So I had a great time. Thanks for following along and, and checking out my videos. Uh, thanks to some other guys that posted their videos. I follow some other guys along. And it's fun to watch coffee and camel cowboy and angle trapping and uh, chip aren't. I'm probably going to forget somebody. Streeter boys. Even if I don't comment sometimes, I'm still watching a bunch of stuff on there. So thanks for posting your videos as well. Uh, first, I want to talk about some bait. Uh, some of the more successful baits I had this year. One was the mouse bait that somebody gave me a tip on making. And I believe it was Judith Davis. If I, I'm, I'm a I apologize if I didn't get the right person. But the mouse bait using Clinton Locklear's mouse oil and mixing it up with some rabbit and stuff, uh, that was one of the better baits that I used. Uh, and one of my go-to baits is Predator Bait Plus from Cavens. Uh, the Top Dog Predator Bait from uh, Hoosier Trapper Supply. I did catch one coyote on it, but when it got cold, it froze. I'm not. I'm not saying the bait's no good or anything. It's just this is my experience with it. And when it got real cold, it froze. Where some the other commercial baits I had, they didn't freeze whatsoever. Maybe I just got a batch that didn't have enough antifreeze in it or whatever. But it ended up freezing up. So, uh, I am going to order some of Dobbin's bait solution again. I remember I made a gallon of that a couple years ago, and it was a pretty effective bait if I remember correctly. Another thing, the Pipe Dream set. Never did catch coyote in a Pipe Dream, but I did catch one red fox and a couple raccoons and possums in it. I caught coyotes right beside them in different sets, but I never caught a coyote in a Pipe Dream set. 
So I, maybe I just, I'm not doing it right. Who knows? But <clears throat> those first two things, the bait and the pipe dream set, that's lead me to another thing. I'm going to do my best, absolute best next season to keep a decent logbook. I started this year and it just fell by the wayside. I started off nice and neat and had everything going and within a couple weeks it was in the back of my truck not getting written in at all. So I think a log book is going to be very helpful. Uh, next thing, skinning. Obviously I learned how to skin out the toes and claws. Uh, that's pretty cool. I got a couple tips on here from guys about using my skinning machine. The first one was inverting the, the fur, so I'm pulling the fur up and the animal was down, so that wasn't very hard for me to, to uh, convert my skinning machine to where I could rotate that. And the fur is being pulled up, my skinning machine comes down at an angle. I did that for length to start with, but it turned out it works. it's pretty nice, that thing's just right here, right in front of my face when I'm working on it. So the fur is up here and the animal's down below, and somebody else gave me a tip on doing it upside down. <laughs> And it, that worked really well too. The animal just sort of naturally curved up into the fur. And then when I got up to the head area, I could just flip it back over and and work on the head nice and easily. Uh, I like my skinning machine. So the, what's coming up, um, I'll be doing another drop off at the FHA down in Altoona. I think it's late March. It's about a month from now, like late March. The FHA auction is in late March. And... We'll see how things go. Who knows? Might make some money, might not. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm just going to break even. Uh, Pennsylvania ron uh, Rendezvous is coming up later in the summer. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get to see some of you guys there. And now it's going to be time to go out and chase some turkeys around and do some beekeeping. So, hope you all have a blessed spring and summer. And if you watch some of my other videos on beekeeping, I'll see you through the summer. If not, I'll see you coming up this fall and do some more trapping together. Thanks again for watching and following along, everybody.